Namaste. I am Raju Sargar from Nepal. I am a director of the Himalayan Peace Study Center. It is a pleasure moment for me to share some experiences regarding nonviolence and peace movement with you all. First of all, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Professor Paul, Tupnev, and participants of this session for this opportunity. Today, in this brief presentation, I would like to share some experiences working in Liberia with UN peacekeeping mission and an introduction of Himalayan Peace Study Center Nepal with some examples of non-violence approach to sustainable peace in the context of Nepal. First, let me start with the experience working in Liberia for peacekeeping efforts. I had been in Liberia with United Nations mission as a human rights officer for four years. Liberia is one of the oldest countries in African continent, having 3.5 million populations and blessed with rich natural resources like gold mine, iron ore, palm oil, rubber plants and more and more. This riches itself became the cause of the war. The UN mission was established in 2003 after the 14 years 1989 to 2003 long civil war leaving 250,000 people killed and valuable national infrastructures destroyed. The war ended with the Accra Comprehensive Peace Agreement signed by the completing parties. The mission successfully completed its mandate on 30 March 2018 following the general election held in 2017. It would be worthy to recall here now how non-violence approaches pressurized to reactivate stall peace talk. A group of Liberian women formed an organization called Women of Liberia Mass Action for Peace and forced a meeting with President Charles Taylor seeking a promise from him to attend peace talk in Ghana, where peace talk was taken initiated. They organized non-violence protests and continued to put pressure on the warring faction during the peace process. They staged a silent protest outside the presidential palace, demanding to reactivate the stall peace talk and formulate the peace agreement. Their creative non-violent protest allowed them to use the power within women and murders of Africa, Liberia. Tactics included a sex strike until their men choose to set aside weapons and threatening to undress during a sit-in outside the venue of peace talks in Ghana. Consequently, the peace agreement was signed and brought forward. Working together, over 3,000 Christian and Muslim women mobilized their efforts and as a result, the women were able to achieve peace in Liberia after 14 years civil war and help bring to power the country's first female president. Among the women leaders who helped end the civil war was Ellen Johnson Sheriff, who became the first modern elected female head of state in Africa when she was elected in 2005. Now, uh, let me talk some uh, United Nations supports for the implementation of the peace process. The United Nations mission in Liberia was established to support the implementation of the ceasefire agreement and the peace process, protect United Nations staff, facilities and civilians, support humanitarian and human rights activities, as well as assist in national security reform, including national police training and formation of a new restructured military. There was a section within the mission called the reconciliation and peace consolidation that supported in the implementation of its mandate through the strategic 
areas like conflict transformation and national integration and youth and civil society empowerment this section was responsible for supporting reconciliation conflict transformation and resolution by helping the Liberian government to build community conflict management capacity to strengthen resilience and address social conflicts such as those arising from concession development build a cohesion national identity a sheer vision ensuring an inclusive reconciliation process develop youth empowerment policy and programming coordinate design and implement strategic peace building and reconciliation frameworks for support to national institutions ensure civil society participation in national reform to include developing appropriate legal mechanism and policies for land dispute resolution and equity to land which offers social economic and cultural benefits to each individuals now the country has more to do and make double efforts to translate their commitment into reality on the ground to ensure people should not be suffered by violent activities again and to institutionalize peace to respect aspiration of the people now i would like to share some experience of non-violence movement in the context of nepal nepal has experienced 10 years 1996 to 2006 long civil war launched by then nepal communist party Maoist, leaving at least 17,000 people killed hundreds of thousands displaced thousands of people disappeared and national infrastructures destroyed then violent rebel group maoist agreed to cease fire and united with the political parties for non-violence political movement against some oppressive regime two months long nationwide non-violent powerful movement made king to step down the political transition and arms rest was possible through the non-violent protest against the tyranny regime i also would like to share an experience about the recent non-violence movement in nepal enough is enough led by the volunteer youth groups against the corruption in relation to medical supplies to handle COVID-19. The movement also demanded 100 PCR tests to identify, trace to control the rapid spreading of COVID-19. The movement spread rapidly nationwide, which pressured Nepalese government to publish tentative statement of the expenses later to pressurize the government more the leader went for satyagraha hunger strike along with fellow friends initially for 12 day in june and then again for 20 day 23 days in july many volunteers joined the satyagraha creative peaceful protests were organized in different places to support the movement and pressurize the nepalese government this movement was different in relation to the participation and approaches participants were students non-affiliated with political parties the movement was founded upon honestly and non-violent so it taught the core youth and whole nation was united for the common cause to deal with covid 19 situation as Kathmandu Valley was locked down, the movement followed all the safety protocols with social distancing and wearing face masks. Nepalese government tried to disturb the movement and did not respond easily to the hunger strike, but strong belief in non-violent movement and its impact to bring all the political alliance to movement pressure the government and agreement made possible. My observation from above two scenarios in non-violence movement attracts larger participation. It doesn't lose 
valuable lives, it doesn't lose valuable resources and infrastructures, and raises hope among the larger population for a better future. It paves the path for sustainable peace. Finally, in brief, I would like to share about Himalayan Peace Study Center Nepal. It was formally initiated in 2018 to institutionalize peace through nonviolence approach. The center is inspired by the Center for the Nonviolence and Peace Studies at University of Rhode Island. Professor Paul was one of the chief guests to inaugurate the center during International Peace Seminar organized in Nepal by Rotary Club of Cabaret Bonipa. The center envisions to integrate Gandhian Kingian principle of nonviolence with Buddha's perspective. We are planning to organize several activities at national and international level in this regard in the future. Thank you all for your participation to listen to me. Thank you very much.